Hello everyone, this is Hank. Uh, today I'm back to talk about the Canon EOS R6 focus bracketing feature, how it works, how to set it up. So first of all, you go to a menu item and you want to choose shoot number 5, which is the red one, where the focus bracketing default is disabled. Once you enable it, you can do this. But keep in mind that you have to manually disable it again, otherwise it's going to be stuck in that mode. Okay, so you go to disable um, and enable it. Okay, so that's the first thing. The next item will be number of shots. Now, later in the video, I'm going to tell you how to determine the number of shots. Right now, we're going to just keep it at 20. Okay. What about focus increment? Focus increment, it gives you a range from 1 to 10. It just says that toward the 1 is more narrow, toward the 10 is wide, but you have no idea how wide that would be. Okay, uh, according to the manual, and I find it to be true, is that it's smart enough to look at the aperture that you set and it guesses what the depth of field needs to be, and it will automatically determine the correct increment for you. So, unless you find it to be faulty, uh, just keep it at default. I, I always do, and it seems to work out just fine for me. Okay, exposure smoothing, what is it? Default disable. You can enable it, of course. And what it is is that even though you know you shoot in manual and nothing is changing, apparently by shifting the um, point of focus, um, apparently in some cases the exposure is going to be affected. So the exposure, um, some is too bright, some is too dark, probably. So if you don't want that and you want the camera to make sure the exposure is consistent throughout all of the pictures, then you might want to enable it. Personally, I don't see any difference for what I do. I use Photoshop, and apparently Photoshop had fixed it or whatever. I never see it, so I just keep it disabled. Okay. So now we are going to talk about a number of shots, how you determine that. Okay, at this point, you're ready to shoot if your number of shots is correct. Okay, um, so let's talk about how to determine the number. First of all, I'm going to focus on the dog's nose, I guess. Okay, but right now, though, I don't know if you look to the right of the screen, you see that l uh, protrusion of a, a ruler. The ruler is in inches, so the number one you see there is one inch, which is two and a half cent centimeter for, for friends that use metric system. All right, so I'm going to focus there so that we can tell what depth of field it is, okay? So I'm going to move the cursor over and focus it there. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell, but right now I have 1.8 set. And I think I only got one-fourth of an inch depth of field there, very shallow. And what I need here for this picture is like 12 inch. So that would tell me that I would need about 50 pictures there for a quarter of an inch, and that's just kind of too much. My Photoshop uh, will die if I do 50 pictures. So what I'm going to do is to set the aperture to something higher to increase the depth of field. So I'm going to do F8. Of course, I got to change the shutter down so that. So that I am, um, okay, I usually overexpose a little bit, so that would be a, a good one, okay. Focus again. 
Now, interestingly, if you see it, there's no change in the depth of field. The reason for that is like Canon cameras, any Canon cameras, including the R6, um, it only show you the depth of field at the lowest lens aperture. In this case, it would be 1.8. So that's just what you're looking at, 1.8, even though you set it at f8. And I don't know if you realize, but the R6 does have a depth of field button in front. And that is what it is for. And when you need to determine what is my depth of field at, at f8 right now, you, you press that button and it will tell you. Press and hold it. Okay. So it looks like I have roughly an inch, maybe a little bit less, but let's round it up as one inch. Okay, one inch worth of depth of field, and I need 12 inch, so, so I need a minimum of 12 shots. Just to be more careful, I would do 15 at, at a minimum, but just for conservatism, I'm going to keep it at 20. I'm lazy. I don't want to set it. Okay, so, and one last thing that you need to do is like always focus at the point that you want to be in focus, the beginning point, closest to the camera. So, in this case, the where I had the, um, the, um, the focus point is the closest to the camera I would want. So I want to focus it there. And the camera will shift it further toward infinity for me. Okay, at this point I'm ready to shoot 20 shots. Okay, so I just press the shutter button and the camera will count down and shift the focus for me. You'll stop at the end of 20. Okay. Now I do a preview right now to look at the last picture. And the last picture, as you can see on the left side of the screen there, there's this this curved uh, black thing with the, the, the cyan thing. That, that is the, the band of my headphone hidden in the back there. And as you can see, that is in focus. So that tells me that my 20 shots is effective. It goes all the way from the front, all the way to the back beyond the computer screen. So I'm pretty safe. All of my three dogs are going to be in perfect focus when I stitch them. Okay. The um, Canon EOS R6, R5, and RP, okay, they, they just do the number of shots and then you have to use post-processing program like Photoshop or DPP to stitch them yourself. Now I read that the new R7 will do a composite picture in JPEG for you as well. Okay, so that is good if you don't really want to go through the motion of doing the stitching. Um, that's really helpful for that. With that, I would like to thank you very much for watching this to the end. If you haven't, I appreciate a like and a subscription from you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.